we are talking to the development team for Evo One Hats. Uh, this is going to be like just a, an awesome opportunity to really get into the brain, to so kind of pop the hood of their of their skulls and try to get into there and see how, what they're thinking and how they're going to see project this project forward and whether or not, more importantly, you and I uh, will invest our hard-earned money into this project. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Aaron. I am on a journey to one. Bitcoin. I'm a, I'm a brand new crypto investor, okay? And so I started in December and I started exploring. And what I quickly found out is that it's the Wild West. The cryptocurrency world, it's, it's the Wild West out here. There's scammers and villains and thugs and whales and heroes and, and all kinds of like amazing things that are coming up. But the thing is, you and I are cowboys and it's kind of like I didn't want to be the lone ranger out here. And so I want to find people who I could trust. And so if you want to follow me along with this one Bitcoin journey, go ahead and hit subscribe down below, hit the notification bell. And if you are feeling like a generous person today, I'm certainly not entitled to your like, but I would ask for it if you're feeling generous. Go ahead and, and give me a like button. Now, just a little bit of background. I, I, this, is, this is something where I feel conflicted because if I talk about a token, and a, lo a lot of people have been wanting to pay me to talk about their token, but I was like, look, I don't feel good about that. And the reason why is because th there's a conflict of interest here. I want to make sure that you're getting like unbiased opinion. And if I'm getting paid to like shill a coin and to shill means basically to pump up and promote a coin that I don't believe in, then you're not getting unbiased information. You're actually getting biased information. And I, don't, I think that's uh, false. So here's my uh, solution to that. I bring on the team, the development teams behind these projects and I ask them, I put them in the hot seat and I say, hey, what's going on here? I don't like this, I love this. And so there's an honest dialogue that happens and you get, the, you get to be the beneficiary of that. So in this interview, I'm gonna bring on Adam and Chad, the development team behind Evil One Hats, and uh, we're gonna grill them and we're gonna put them in the hot seat and they're gonna tell us why we should be investing our hard-earned money into their project. Guys, welcome to the, to the interview, Adam and Chad, thanks for joining me today. How you doing, Aaron? Aaron, thanks for having us. Oh man, I'm I'm excited to have you guys. You guys have a a an, like a, a very interesting project where it merges hats, NFTs, and crypto. But before we get into that, I need to know a backstory, origin story. Um, what what's your background and how did you get to this point? Then we'll talk about the project. So maybe Adam, you could go first. Sure. Um... So I got into crypto in 2017. So I've done mining, trading, you know, what most people have done in it. And it was actually a couple of years ago um, that I was thinking that I wanted to have a collectible hat line. And one of the reasons was I had a hat I'd been wearing for years and uh, I finally wore it out. I went to replace it and I realized they didn't make it anymore. And then I started looking online and where am I going to get this? And it turns out that there's a huge collectible hat market that I wasn't even aware of, um, but then started to interest me a little bit. Um, but one of the issues was, is similar to sneakers, is that it was always knockoffs and there's fakes and there's things that you can't do. So when oh, I was wow. thinking of, I want to have a collectible hat line, I kind of abandoned the idea because I said, well, you know, what am I going to do to make it original? And first I said, well, let's QR code it. But, you know, QR codes can be copied. And then I said, well, let's let's number them so we know they're individual. Let's have a website you can go to. And it got close. But once again, it wasn't quite there. And then recently with the popularity of NFTs, um, it made, you know, Chad knew about this idea when I had it. And so we talked and we said, we really should revisit that um, because that solves the problem that we had. The NFT cannot be reproduced. It's going to show ownership. Right. It's going to show authenticity. It basically solved the problem that we had. That's fascinating. So, okay, you're going to have to back up. So, okay, so that's your kind of lead up to the project. Chad, what's your little, what's your origin story? What's your background and how you, how'd you lead up to this project? Yeah, thanks, Aaron. So, uh, you know, I've had kind of an interesting background, uh, kind of more in the business world. Uh, you know, I've worked for a major brand and kind of watched them skyrocket into the future and uh, watched them actually go to uh, to market. Um, so that was that was really pretty exciting for me. Can you uh, from can there, you say, can you say the major brand or major or not? It it was uh, it was actually Yeti. Um, Ooh. So another. Ooh. Another crazy brand. A lot of uh, experience kind of, then. You got a lot of experience to bring in, bring it in. A, a little bit, a little okay. bit. But, you know, really developing a brand, coming into a new market that just, you know, building a better mousetrap or 
you know, something that could be uh, really sought after. And again, like Adam said, you know, in, in their world, there's a lot of correlations to what we're talking about because knockoffs were very, you know, prevalent. So uh, I worked with Yeti. I actually had a great experience there. Uh, got kind of poached away from them to work for another organization and kind of help develop their or redevelop their wholesale channel. And that was an apparel company, uh, which gave me a little bit of background in the apparel world and kind of seeing behind the behind the curtain on, you know, how a, an apparel company operates and, and uh, how to kind of live in that market. Uh, and that was obviously a good tie in for what Adam was talking about as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, most recently I work for a startup company in Silicon Slopes and I also do some consulting like you. So, uh, you know, this is just a, this is a really fun side project, but I think what's most exciting is Adam and I are just normal dudes. Um, we're just normal guys. And, uh, you know, me personally, Adam's got the experience in, in doing some crypto a little bit more than I do. Um, I'm, I'm a new soul in the whole thing. Um, you know, I, I, I've dabbled a little bit. I bought some, some coin early in January of this year, and I'm really kind of enjoying the, the crazy ride, you know, the ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah, Everything yeah. that goes along with it, man. It's the Wild West. I keep saying it. Okay, so let me recap here and let me try to see see what happened here. Adam, you started in crypto and you bring that aspect to this project, like the, the know-how and the insight, the deep insight, especially four years ago about crypto, NFTs, uh, mining, all like the little intricacies. And then you had the vision, I guess, for the, uh, you know, unique hats, un, you know, verified, this is the real deal hat. Is, is yes. that's that's what you're coming and then Chad you're bringing in the apparel um, expertise and business expertise as far as really with the apparel and and that industry uh, because we're dealing with hats here right so do you got do you guys did you guys know each other in real life how'd you guys come and, and meet up and all that stuff yeah we've uh, we've known each other for years we, we were okay. yeah we what happened is that we had previously worked in another job together and so we knew each other from then and that was part of why I kind of bounced the idea off him initially is because when I first had it, he was, you know, in apparel and branding. And I said, what's the thoughts? And like I said, at the time, it was just, there was no way to protect, uh, you know, the IP. It's just, the, you know, anything in apparel is just so yeah. hard to show, prove what's original and what's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so hence we have the problem. Now, I, I've, got a, I've got a couple of things. I've got a little lizard brain in here, okay? I've got gorilla arms and diamond hands, but I have a lizard brain, so I don't understand much about the crypto world. I'm still brand new. What is an NFT? I know kind of what an NFT is, but help me describe in like simple lizard terms. Like, you, like talk to me like I'm an eight-year-old or a fifth or five-year-old. Something. What is an NFT? Sure. So the NFT stands for non-fungible token. And it's a token on the blockchain that once it's put there is immutable. It cannot be changed and it's going to show its entire history. Okay, so you know that once it's placed there, um, the provenance of whatever it represents is going to um, be static the entire time. So they've been used for art. Um, you know, most recently that's where they've made headlines is with, you know, crypto punks and crypto kitties and things like that that are using NFTs to represent a singular item. Now, what we're doing is we're tying it in to the hat itself, okay? Um, that's one of the reasons why what's unique about the hats is the numbering that's going to be on the side of them. Um, for example, I see a number on the side of your hat, yeah. Yeah, so the one I'm wearing has a number. The one, you know, this is here. These are just the prototype ones, and they, that's why they have a P on them. But we got number P1 and number P2. And so this is going to match up with the NFTs that exist. And these are already out there. People can go to our website. You can link to them. You can see where they're created. And then you can see that what the hat looks like. You're going to know who owns it, what wallet it's in. And so the idea of the NFT being attached to a physical item in this respect is that you're going to be able to see exactly what it represents. Okay. So other times where the NFT just represents the picture of whatever it may be in this case it's used to prove okay if you own the nft this clearly is your hat and you can show it to someone to say this is an evil one hat so you could have one that might look similar someone could try to make something that they think is going to look like it but the reality of it is if you had number 75 of series one you would own that nft you can pull it up in your wallet and you can show this is mine 
this is absolutely the original. And it also tracks the providence in other ways. I mean, for example, if someone said, listen, the one that was in this particular video we're doing right now, how would I know if it's this one? Well, you'd know because the NFT exists out there. Oh, if that's it so cool. Hand, yeah. There are no question of what this hat's connected to and who's owned it and what wallet it's going to be in. Yeah, yeah. So, so check. So, like, I was rap, I was watching like a like a rap like a music video the other day, and, and um, the guy was wearing a hat, and I and it was like a low kind of low budget music video. I'm not gonna say who it is because I'm you know, kind of trashing it. But I was like, man, all that stuff is in that music video is fake. That that the money's fake that they talk on bricks in, and that the shirt's fake and the hat's fake. And so I just I just mentioned it, right? I just mentioned uh -huh. it. the car's probably fake. It's rented and all that stuff. That's interesting. That's super interesting because it's like I'm just trying to figure out like what what does this mean? I mean like I, I want to zoom out first. What does this mean for the whole space in general? If you could link an NFT to a physical object, correct? It's well, I mean like there's no end. there's no stopping it, right? You there, could go anywhere, anything. Absolutely no stopping it. And I think. Um, I think we're going to be one of the first, obviously. That's our goal here. Um, right. But I think you're going to see similar things going forward. But once again, that's the nature of a collectible. Okay, If you're going to start collecting somewhat something, do you want the first one that was made? Or do you want 10 iterations into the future? Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? And, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, bro. And also, like I remember having a roommate, and he had a whole wall of hats. He nailed things, in, and he had like hats like all around. So I mean, like I definitely, I definitely see the the market for a for a hat collection. I'm not a hat collector guy myself, but um, I roomed with someone who was that. So I was like, <laughs> and he used it as decoration, and I'm sure a lot of people use that stuff as decoration and stuff like that too. Um, so that's really uh, why why the um, why the name Evo One. Uh, I mean. EVO 1, uh, kind of EVO, uh, stands for Electronically Verifiable Original, and 1, because whatever you're looking at that hat, it's one of a kind. Every single one that we sell is unique. So okay. that is so the EVO a, 1. Yeah, so, so, so it's an acronym. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So, okay, so give me, a, give me an idea of, of uh, where you guys are going and how you're going to get there. And, and this is, uh, I wanted to spend some time on how, where you guys are going as a separate question and how are you going to get there as a because that's more like marketing and plan but where yeah. where are we going with this thing so you've got a hat you know um are, are you guys out on the market yet i haven't even checked can i buy it well, can i buy your we're not in the market we are very early um okay. you know with the hat uh I, one thing with um hat as as an apparel item is it's not like regular clothing because when people pick a hat to wear, usually it's going to be something that they're interested, something symbolic, things like that. And if you're looking at an Evo One hat connected to an NFT, you're probably into crypto. So that's you know something that's going to be connected to. But when we're yeah. looking at the direction that we plan to go on it, um, being a collectible hat, there's going to be a limited number of hats in each series. And so every year we would come out um, with a few series and then the hats that were in them would be capped and limited in how many we release. It's, it's, that's what's going to keep the collectability there. For the design of the hat, um, this particular one in the Series 1, um, it's definitely symbolic, obviously, as the company name on it. But the line that's behind it, that's actually the Ethereum price chart from inception to 2021. So oh, that's crypto, so cool. You can see oh we got our peak gosh. in 2017. We got our dips. We got 2021 right here. I mean, so, so the people... I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, Adam. I was like, yo, that that design's whack, bro. That... <laughs> 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 that's fair. I'm, like, what? I'm like, what is that? It's just, what is that? And then when you said that it is the Ethereum chart, I was like, that is brilliant. That is what? so cool. Right. So so this one is definitely the, the series one is going to be the symbolic. It's going to be the first one. Um, I mean, it's we're looking at we're talking to you because we're looking at people that are in crypto that are going to be the main one interested in. That's why we took that for kind of the future designs. Generally, we're going to partner with an artist, have the artist design it. So if we're looking at series two, we're going to have an artist design it. And that's going to be the look for series two. There'll be a limited number of series two hats. And then once those sell out, the design's never going to be used again. That's the other thing about the way that we're doing it. So these Series 1 hats 
once these get sold and the you know they're done we are never going to use this design again ever um, it's not going to happen so yeah. it's not going to be new numbers it's not going to be you know the next iteration the designs are going to be unique and they're only going to come out with a few series per year and then the number of hats in the series um, the, the a thousand generally is going to be, if it's going to be a bigger one, we may go up to 5,000, but as you know, in collectibles, even if we make 5,000 of a particular hat, that's not a whole lot to go around. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe some, some thoughts of mine. First of all, I love the idea that it's like, it's like it, that you knew that that was the Ethereum chart because <laughs> it's like, it's like an inside thing it's like an insider absolutely like thing you like it like a secret club like i was on the outside i'm like man that hat is like whack looking i would not wear that <laughs> I'm, like, just, I'm just being real like i'm, I'm like I, I don't think i'd wear that hat and now that i know it's linked to crypto and ethereum in some way like i i def i'd be like wearing this hat no problem this is ethereum you don't know nothing about this hat you know like that's the mentality right. like people don't know what this is and if you do know what it if you know now you know like you know what i'm saying like so I'll give you an example. Like my friend was walking his dog down the street and, um, and you know, I don't know what it is, but like talking about crypto is like, you're kind of uneasy. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just <laughs> me, but like, you know, you don't want to come off as that weird guy. And it's a weird crypto. And when, if you meant, whenever you mention it, people were like, oh yeah, it's that scam thing or whatever. At least this is my experience. Um, because I'm not around a lot of techie guys. Anyway, he was walking his dog and his dog was going crazy. And he was, he had his, he was checking his like crypto on his phone. And the guy's like, you're, look, you're walking, a guy on the neighbor, he's like, you're walking your dog and you're checking your phone, man. It's not a good mix. He's like, oh, sorry, I'm just checking my crypto. And he's like, what? And then all of a sudden they're like best friends. They're like, oh, let's talk about crypto. What's going to hit next? And that's the thing. It's like, it's like when you design something around uh, the industry or the niche of crypto, like we're, we're hype about it. Like, you know, like we are, we, people who are in crypto love crypto is what I've, <laughs> what I've right. seriously found. And so my question, like my questions in my head were like, how do you, what is your theory or philosophy behind the design? You know what I'm saying? Like I would, if it's a cool design, there's a million cool designs out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I really resonated with the fact that it was like a crypto design. Like there's a meaning behind that crypto design. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling, but maybe what's your thoughts on, on, on designing hats? Like, how do you get people to like your hat is basically what I'm asking. Uh, I mean, well, that's the thing about hats is everyone's going to, you know, have something that they embrace. They're going to have something they see and they're going to like the look of and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, like we just said, there's going to be a difference with ours because obviously we know, you know, what the series one represents, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there is, you know, kind of being inside the club if you know what it is. So when we go forward and we're trying to, you know, come out with new series and we're getting these artists, I mean, there are a lot of artists selling NFTs right now and in that world. And these are obviously the people that we're going to approach because we're going to approach the people oh, in our world. So if you have take... an artist that's already sold tons of NFTs that people know of, you're probably going to be interested in the hat. And it yes. may not be the favorite design that they made, but there's going to be a demand and it's going to be collectible. We're, once again, we're selling something. It's a collectible that you can wear. You that can walk sense. outside and you can let everyone know. So that was my other question, right? I was like, who, I mean, from a marketing standpoint, me as the, like a marketing guy, I'm sure. like, bro, trying to get a brand up and running is so hard. It's so stupid hard. Like you, you got to go on social and you got to find, you got to like promote this, this brand that no one cares about. But if you partner with already famous people, Yes. And you are not the brand that they're, you're promoting. You're merely like the platform for these, these other NFT artists to then come to you and say, I want to sell my NFT on a hat. Evo one is the, is the platform. You're not the, you're not the brand, you're the platform right. and you're hosting these NFT artists. Correct. That's brilliant guys. <laughs> Yo, that's seriously, that's really, so here's, so I've been doing a lot of study on um, platform businesses. And um, like I, I've read from a few books and stuff like that. And what a platform business is for anyone who doesn't uh, really know, it's basically Airbnb. Um, it's where Airbnb is the platform and they host people to, to then rent out their, their houses or whatever. So they're the largest like housing hospitality business, but they own no hotels, right? 
So essentially, it's, it's like Publix. Publix is the platform, and all these little cookies and cereals, they're being hosted on the Publix platform or store. Evo One is not the brand. Like, you're not trying to make Evo One famous. I mean, yes, famous as, but you're famous as the platform where you host these NFT artists for your designs of your... Guys, Correct. I'm just like, I'm just like, it's like easing into my little lizard brain here, and I'm just... That's pretty smart. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. I'm sorry. I'm just like thinking I'm about it. Just like thinking about it. What I think is really cool about it too is is we're gonna engage uh, content creators who are in the lifestyle. So people who you know are like you said posting um, other original artworks as NFTs, but also maybe you know a content creator who has a specific cause that's very important to them. Uh, and we can kind of help them drive, you know, either whether it be, you know, a fundraising activity or awareness around whatever their social cause or activity is. So it's it's a really awesome way to represent in a subtle way that you're a part of the lifestyle and that you're you're bought in. Yeah. So um, talk to me about the how do you the, the making of this hat? Talk to me about that. Like how do you make a hat? <laughs> like the, I don't know, how do you partner? What do you part? What do you, how do you talk to me about the process of making this hat? Uh, I mean, I, like, honestly, that's, that's where Chad comes in. Um, I mean, okay. you deal with manufacturers and things like that. Um, so that's where his expertise uh, basically uh, takes over. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, and what's, what's important about this too, is it's not, we're not producing a hundred thousand of these, we're not going to have 80,000 different SKUs of products that are going to be available in retail and online and all these areas. It's very unique, very niche. Yeah. So the cost yeah. on the product is, is typically going to be higher, but you're getting, like you said, that memorable piece. Now I'm, I'm one of those dudes who Matt, Adam's seen it. Um, I've got a wall full of hats in my house. Oh really? You're one of those dudes. Okay. Ones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I mean, you know, there's different things to me too. I look at it as why aren't you wearing your Evo One hat, man? They're so limited. He literally <laughs> has the only ones available right now. They're limited from the. <laughs> yeah, man, dude, oh, that's such a brilliant idea. So yeah, so do you guys um, do you guys partner with like uh, some some company in some other country, or do you just go to a website? You don't have to tell me exactly how, but I'd like to know what's the process of you guys getting these hats and. Uh, design from design to from conception to in my hands what's that process right yeah I mean and right now when we're talking about early on it's at this point where we're looking at the manufacturers because we have to make sure that process is going to be exactly what it wanted to be um, we have some there's different challenges with uh, our product that others don't have um, because if someone was just making hats and sending it out they could partner with any manufacturer and it's easy and simple and doesn't matter but what's different with our product is that we not only have to make the base hat, then every one of them has to be embroidered individually with numbering. And then mm -hmm. they have to take and go to the studio to have the pictures of that particular hat so the NFT can be created. So there is... Oh, yeah. So when you're talking about the labor involved, uh, I yeah. mean, once again, it, this is why not everyone's doing it is because it's not just calling up a manufacturer and say, can you put this logo on a hat? And yeah, that, no way. That is so far from it. That is the very, very beginning. So you, you're the labor is way more intensive now. I didn't oh, even yes. think about that. It was so. It's like you order the hat, you order the design. It looks great. Now you individually, like number the hat, and then yes. you individually take pictures of the hat. Yes. And, and then you individually. The yeah. Oh my goodness. Good googling me. So there was this. There's recently. There's this. Um. Uh, I guess scandal or whatever. Um, Nike launched this shoe, and then Lil Nas X, a rapper, turned them into like Satan shoes or something like that. And they're like, <laughs> "That's not us." What? The heck? <laughs> and, and he used a company in Brooklyn or something like that. And they they didn't make the shoe, but they just embroidered like like Satan six 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 on the thing or whatever. Sure. And then they actually. This is crazy. They put a drop of human blood in it. It's like, oh my gosh, dude, it's wild. It was a wild story. Like it's wild. Anyway, none. I mean, either way, Nike was not happy about. It. They were like, we are not into any of this. This is not us. And so, um, so our, I just wonder about the 
like the level, the, the yeah, that all that added labor um, is a separate entity entity from actually just manufacturing design the hat. Correct. How how big is your team? Uh, I'm, I mean, team size right now. You're looking at it, so. <laughs> Bro, this is early. We're early. I mean, it's we're we're startup phase. We're in the ground, yeah. and it's the point where, and that's. I guess that's one of the other things too. The people who are interested in this, I mean, if you're seeing this video, getting on our mailing list, joining our Facebook page, you're going to be the first ones to know. And yeah. you know, we're the type of people that we, you know, appreciate customers. And so, if we're looking for a new series launching in the future, the people who are going to have the first opportunity are the ones who supported us in the past. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, right now yeah. when we're looking at going to market. Um, Logistically for us, the, the best vehicle looks like it's going to be Kickstarter. So we're actually planning a Kickstarter launch. So it's wow. basically going to be pre-selling at that point. Cool. Um, and then once the Kickstarter launch is done, because anyone in crypto knows, uh, you're creating NFTs, you got gas fees. And so we got to pay for those, <laughs> you know, up front somehow. Um, so that's why we chose that vehicle. Yeah. Um, but once that happens and once the, you know, the company is established, uh, future ones, the first people are going to have the opportunity to buy because the future ones will be bought on our website are going to be the yeah. ones who already own a hat. They're going to get first notice and we're going to say, hey, Series 2 is coming out. If you want to uh, reserve one, we got you. You're going to have the first opportunity to do it. And uh, it's definitely something you'll be able to buy with crypto in the future. I think our biggest frustration, honestly, now is just the logistics of it because of mm -hmm. how we have to launch, uh, that we you know, have to use something like Kickstarter um, yeah. and can't accept crypto right away. So that's a disappointment I think we really have. So, yeah, tell, talk to me about the tokenomics of this thing. So if I so say. Uh, can, I can't pick up your tokens right now, right, or anything like that. I mean, uh, technically, they, you know, they were created on Rarible. Um, in the future, it's something okay. that, uh, yeah, they'll be created um, on, you know, one of the the major sites. And so, when the tokens are exchanging hands and things like that, so for the, you know, right now we have the two because we had the prototype stage. We had to make sure what's it going to look like for marketing. What's it going to be? The, the logistically, does it work? Um, and so, yeah, you can take and go to our website. You can go to them right now and, um, you know, technically we don't have them listed as for sale, obviously. Um, but if it's something that we decided to, you know, put for sale in the future, they could accept bids and everything like that. They're, you can find them on OpenSea. Uh, they exist. The NFTs are out there. Oh, you don't have, oh, I'm, the, oh, the, the NFTs are on OpenSea right now? Yeah, the NFTs you can find on, yep, OpenSea and Rarible, yep. They're, like and, I said, they're not listed for sale, but if you go to our website, go to the gallery, um, okay. there are active yeah. links, and you can click on it, and uh, it will it will take you to the NFT itself. You can okay, so, so, it in okay. Mask wallet. <laughs> okay, so, I got an idea, right? I got an idea. It's striking me right now. Uh, my, my YouTube channel has been exploding, um, and it's been growing faster than I could keep up, and I'm so grateful for this like little community that I was just say, well, I'm like, I'm just brand new. Like, hey guys, what's going on? And I, what I say a lot is that the, the and I feel like it's so true that the crypto world is the wild west and I'm a cowboy here and I felt like a lone ranger. And then I was thinking, I was like, what can I give back to my community? I was like, maybe I could get like a 10 gallon hat you know, <laughs> and, and I could just wear it sometimes. I'm not even a cowboy person, right? But I like the spirit of the cowboy, right? Like the old Westerns and stuff like that. So uh, if I were like some kind of influence, like a big, big time influencer, right? And I'm like, guys, I want to create an NFT and I want to create a, uh, I don't know anything about how to create an NFT. I have zero, zero, like I don't even know where to go. Uh -huh. I, I, I spelled open C, O P E N C. It's like the letters, like, I don't, I don't know. Is there, is there a way that you could help someone like me, like a micro, micro, micro influencer or these bigger influencers, like get started because crypto is so new. I mean, wouldn't that make sense if you were to like, Hey, you're an influencer. What if we, what if we, what if you did this? What if you pitch your own NFT and now you're into the crypto world? Like, I'm sure you wanted to everyone and everyone wants to get into some kind of crypto. But sure. it's like they're too scared or they don't have the money or it's not the time or whatever. But um, yeah, how would you help me do that? How would you help me launch this? Is there marketing behind it? Like what's the whole, what's the pipeline here? Well, are you talking, you know, a, a specific type of item or are you just talking NFTs in general? I want, 
I want what you are doing. I want I want a, a ten gallon cowboy hat. <laughs> okay. I want my logo on it and a little series number on it. I don't know if you thought about this. I have no idea. I'm just coming up with this right now. But you you have a hat there that's like kind of flat brim. I can't really tell. I'm not yeah. I'm one who wears like like these Nike hats more often. Uh-huh. And they're like like and I like to do the bill so that type of hat doesn't really apply to uh, appeal to me but uh-huh. for the reasons for this youtube channel i want a 10 gallon cowboy hat or this kind of hat but this is the type i wear like every day okay but that's what i would want to give back to my community i want like let's say 110 gallon cowboy hats with a little logo on it with a little serial number saying like hey this is an evo one official nft like if you get this hat you get the nft with it What's the total cost here? What am I what am I talking about here? How much is it going to cost me to get that and what's it going to take to get that to one of my subscribers? Um I mean costs it's it's hard to exactly say cuz once again once we have the hat style then we're looking at basic sourcing, labor for the thing. I mean and it depends honestly gas fees themselves are a yep. huge consideration. Um for example, I, I since you never made an NFT just give you an idea um, is that making one NFT for one of the hats was eighty to ninety dollars, and so yeah, <laughs> right. And so once again, when you're looking at um, a collectible item, um, it, it's going to you know look at that as part of the value. Just so, be straight with me. Like, what are we talking here? Two hundred bucks per per hat. Yeah, you you would probably look in 200, you know, maybe a little bit more depending on once again some, you know, the style of the hat and the labor, but you're probably looking over 200. And like I said, a good chunk of it. I mean, you're looking at 50% going to gas fees. And once again, there's there's no way around it. And that's one of the reasons too why we're saying it's a collectible hat because yeah. you know, yeah. you're not just going to go out and say, "All right, I'm going to go ahead and drop this kind of money on the hat." And right. You know, just and, and just take and not expect that there's going to be some, I guess, accumulation in value. But yes, okay. once again, let's let's say we do the air in line. Let's say we do the air in line of hats and yeah. there's only 100 out there and they see it on your channel and they see Aaron. He's wearing number four today and Aaron's going to go ahead and he's going to give number four to a viewer. I mean, that's something of value. That's something. Yeah, impressive. absolutely. And, they, and so you maybe not, the maybe not 100, today. maybe like 10, right? Maybe. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but I'm being real like I'm being so honest here there are all these little micro influencers out there just like me yes. they've got about 10,000 20,000 subscribers and they want to do something nice for their community okay for, so and that's honestly what you can probably get initially at first you're not I mean I don't think I mean I hope you do but how are you gonna get a Logan Paul with millions of subscribers and stuff like that these or who makes a NFT Pokemon card and they sell it for millions of dollars you know what I'm saying? Like, to, and to be honest with you, that's not, we don't, we don't want to talk to Logan Paul. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, oh. not that he'd be bad for business, but, uh, you know, like Chad's in the beginning, we're two guys and, you know, we had an idea and we're more interested in talking to the people starting out, the people who are grinding out, trying to make it. And that's why, mm-hmm. you know, if we're talking to an, an, an NFT artist and we're saying, hey, let's put you on a hat, we're not, we're not going to the guy who just, made two million dollars sent all his nft art we want the guy who's been putting the effort in grinding it out and needs some exposure right. that's who we so, want to show so let's do it right now let's do it right now i'm that guy i'm <laughs> i'm that guy i really am dude okay. i was just talking about this 20 minutes ago before our, before our interview i was talking to my mentor and he was like get a 10 gallon hat aaron <laughs> i was like yes and you guys hop on this interview and I'm like, so I, I believe in, I believe in Providence. I believe things happen for a reason. Let's do it. Like, I want to do this. How do I get a 10 gallon hat with a little series sponsored by Evo one or whatever it looks like? How do we get that ball rolling? And maybe, maybe we get that ball rolling like a year from now or half a year from now, whatever it is. Right. I'm not, I'm not in a rush, but like, uh, your, your market base is really, doable. It's uh, absolutely oh, doable. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> Good, googly, googly. This is this is really awesome. I mean, it really is because it's like the the um, the the cow, whole counterfeit stuff. Like this could go into a lot of things, right? Would you are you guys are you guys locked into hats or do you, could you do like purses or shoes and stuff like that? Uh, I, 
right now, I mean, we're going to focus on hats because we're starting out. But the reality of it is, is yes, this can go into many other categories and it could be purses. It could be, you know, a number of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, our niche is going to be hats and it's going to be, you know, honestly, crypto themed hats because that's where our interest is. Um, but then this is one other area where kind of the collectible aspect comes in because we believe that NFTs are going to, you're going to see this expanding a lot more. Okay. Yeah. You're going to see other companies doing this, you know, once, once they see how, how good it is and to see that yeah. it can be relied upon and to see that people, they want something to prove what's real. Um, and this is where, you know, being first obviously is going to be an advantage. Yeah. So is, is there anything that you can do? I'm not sure if there is like copying this concept, or is this just like free games? It's the, crypt, it's the wild west. People can just take, it's, take names and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like it's kind of the wild west. <laughs> this is definitely yeah. one that falls in the wild west. I mean, yeah. you can try to throw patents out and do things like that. And, you know, I've looked into it, but the reality of it is, is that it's such a basic idea of attaching it. And it's, it's just a use case for an NFT. You know what right. I mean? And yeah. it's just actually applying it. There's a lot of companies and, and people who talk about doing it, but it's like anything else. Until you actually take some action, it's just talk. And that's yeah, where we're taking yeah. some action that, and making it happen. And to me, this is the biggest use case for an NFT. Yeah. Honestly, I'm one of those guys who are like, wow, what is an NFT? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. I have a little lizard brain. Why would you buy something digitally? I just, I just screenshot it. Oh, no, I got it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I am one of those guys who doesn't really believe in NFTs, but I believe in the market. Okay? I believe in the market for NFTs. I don't really believe in NFTs. So be, and the reason why, and maybe you could help me understand why NFTs are so big, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, the reason why I think I don't believe in NFTs is because there's nowhere to d- display an NFT. So like if I buy a painting, I could display it in my house, I could display it in a museum and say, everybody, look at me having this painting, <clears throat> right? And I just, I don't see that yet um, with an NFT. It's like if I buy an NFT, where do people go and see, look at me on my phone, like physically, like, look at me, I got this little thing on my phone. Or the only thing, the only place I found was Decentraland. You know what I mean? Right. Like where you, where you go into this virtual world and I look, you look in Aaron's house, virtual house, and you see this NFT, but who's going to like come and visit my house for that? You know what I mean? Like, so maybe there's a NFT, Decentraland museum or something. I don't know. Well, but and- this... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Aaron, you're exactly, exactly right. And that was also part of our thoughts is that, you know, people have the NFTs and there's use cases. And yes, you can show it's unique. But what's the point of having a unique item if literally no one ever gets to see it? No, it's it's all clout. Like if you buy a skin on Fortnite, you you wear the skin and people see that skin. Like if that was an NFT, that makes sense. But no one sees these NFTs. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to break my brain. I'm like, why? Why? Right. It, it, so, I mean, I think that's that's part of the exciting part of it, too, is that one, you have an actual like physical souvenir, but there yes. is also the potential for that NFT to be something more in a virtual world or in an augmented reality world. And, yeah. you know, I probably shouldn't step too far into what we're looking at in the future, but there's other technology that we can build into uh, the hats themselves to to help you kind of signal to others that uh, you know you have an NFT original hat from Evo One. Like what? Like, like what? Like what? <laughs> I, like I said, I I can't really get too deep into it. Come now. on, I don't man! Dig... Come on. Oh man, I gotta have a couple secrets. But uh, okay, I, I think me... I think okay, the important me... thing to know is that like this is this is so much more. I don't think. I don't think we're going to hear in our lifetime anyone ever say, hey, remember that NFT thing? I think it's here to stay. Oh, I think I got I got an idea. So you don't have to confirm or deny, okay? But what if people wore like Google glasses or they or they held up their phone to your hat and they saw like a little like logo, like an NFT hat on there or or like, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, something. They saw, like you hold up, like I played Pokemon Go like crazy, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm over 30 years old, bro. I'm 32 years old, man. <laughs> and not now I didn't play, but maybe like a couple of years ago when it first came out, I did. And that whole technology of like doing this and like seeing Pokemon was wild to me. It trans, it transported me into the freaking Pokemon world. Sure. Um, and I'm a grown man. And so 
Yeah, that would be amazing. That would be, and that that's probably is that if that's what you're thinking or not what you're thinking. I'm sure that's at least somewhat possible. Like right, like you're like there's a little chip or something like that, and you see something. Yeah, there's. That'd be kind of... Let's just say that yes, there's uh, some technologies Chad's familiar with that uh, can be implemented in the future. <laughs> oh, that's cool. As, that's as far so as cool. we can go on it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll definitely have to make a follow up on you guys. I want to see where y'all are at and like you know, like a year or something like that. And maybe, I don't know if that technology is available or something. Exactly. Bro, that's you're what you're, you're, your hat should be out I'm by that. You. <laughs> I'm saying, I think that's a great idea. I, I, I love that. hat. Okay. So let's get back to you guys' project. Okay. And I'm just, I'm merely, I don't mean to like put, make, make it about me and my hat. I'm just saying like, I am a real use case scenario. Like I'm a guy who is looking, I was just on Amazon. I'm trying to buy fine hats and I didn't realize like, these hats are like 40 bucks. I'm like, okay, I'm spending, I'm good with spending 40 bucks, but like have series collectible editions. Like that makes sense to me. It, it would make sense that it's like 250, maybe even $300 a hat because it's a collectible and because you guys have to make money. Everyone has to make money around the, the whole like uh, supply chain or whatever. So um, yeah, I mean, I get it. It makes sense. It makes sense to me. You know, uh, and here's the thing to think uh, about too. Like I have several hats where they're very special to me because, you know, I bought them at a specific sporting event or something major happened, or maybe I was at a festival or something. So I've got that tie to it as well. That makes, oh, that makes so much sense. I didn't even, I mean like you guys, I'm sure you guys thought about all so many use case scenarios. I'm just like now that sporting events, concerts, that makes sense. Is there anything I'm missing? Like you guys have like, where could you where could What's the possibilities for this? Well, no, I mean, I think you're totally getting it. And that's the thing is there's tons of possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be something that, um, like I said, in the collectible market, it's going to get to a point where if there's no NFT, how do you know it's real? Yeah, 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 I think you're right. In collectibles, and there's a lot, and there's huge collectible markets. How do you yeah. know it's real? Is, is, the real, is the real problem, huh? That is it. That is it. So let's get back to you guys' project, and I want to know more about the team. You guys... How, what's been the biggest challenge so far in, in, in this startup, in this phase? How long have you been on this project and what's been the biggest challenge? Um, I mean, you know, we didn't do it, working at it a couple months. Obviously, like I said before, the idea itself was years old, but um, for the past uh, couple months is when we've really been hard at it and trying to get things launched. Um, mm -hmm. And really, the most difficult part is just letting people know you know, that it's, that it's out there, what we're doing and just getting the message out. And so, I mean, talking to you obviously helps with that and, you know, we appreciate it. And yeah. uh, that's the most difficult thing for us is, you know, we have, uh, you know, multiple markets we're serving, people interested in hats, people interested in crypto, NFT, and it's just making sure we get in their ear and say, hey, this is what we're working on. This is what's coming down the pipeline. Be ready. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's like you're really in the pocket here, right? You're like really, they got to be interested in hats. Yep. NFTs and, gen and general crypto. Yep. Look, I I've heard this quoted before, um, and maybe you could you you know about it. Uh, it's better to have the lion's share of a small portion than the scraps of a big portion. And if your lion's share is in that big in that pocket, hats, NFTs, crypto, and if you get the lion's share of that portion, yeah, I, I see this. I see this really um, doing very very well. So, I mean, I already know that I would want to do this for my subscribers. So whenever you guys are ready to roll, like I know that I know that this is what I want to do. I'm thinking, until then I'm just going to buy 10 gallon hats on Amazon and maybe like put a Sharpie <laughs> on it or something. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's about it. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, uh, I think, um, I think we're winding down to the end of this call. I hope if you're watching, uh, this video and you're trying to figure out what, what good use case is this? And like, if this is a project for you, I don't know about you, but I'm 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 very convinced that this this is something that the future will hold. Like marrying NFTs to collect to tangible collectible items that makes sense to my little lizard brain. It makes more sense than like buying like an image, right? It, it just makes sense to me. But of course, I am not a financial advisor. I don't care how you spend your. Actually, I do care. I hope you make money, but I I don't want you to do your research, right? Do your research on these guys. Go visit their website. Um, I'll make another video or something maybe down the line on like a like an update or looking through the website and all that kind of stuff. But I want to uh, end this video uh, with one more question, uh, Adam and Chad. Are there any last final thoughts that you want to leave us? Anything that I didn't cover? 
anything that you want us to know, you know, like why I could already see, yeah, why should we invest in you guys? Why should we take the time to look at you guys? Like maybe answer that question and maybe some final thoughts. So floor is open guys. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just like to say, like I said, we think this is where the future is going in collectibles. Um, I, we're not the only ones that see it. Uh, we're just going to be some of the people that have the boots on the ground first. Uh, we're definitely catering towards the crypto market, so we think we're in the right place. <laughs> um, and that anyone who's interested, we just ask that you know join our email list on our website or follow us on Facebook because you're going to get first notification when we launch and when they're actually going to be available for sale. So you can make sure that you get yours reserved because um, it's going to be an exclusive item. And like I said before, Series 1 is only coming out one time. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me ask this question, though. If I, I'm, I'm a new investor, right? What, just answer this question the best you can. Why should I invest? Why should I look at you guys? And, um, we, and uh, obviously this whole video has been that, but I want you to like encapsulate it for the little lizard brains out there who just want it simple. Like, why should I consider this project? I mean, if you're considered from the investment standpoint, <laughs> um, we've already seen the way that NFTs accumulate value. So first off, you want one because you want to look cool and you want people to know that you have a cool, uh, <laughs> that you're into crypto. But really, it's because there's going to be a secondary market. I mean, let's look at the, the reality of it is that NFTs are going to get resold. It's a collectible item attached to a physical item. There's absolutely going to be a secondary market. So uh, honestly, okay, that's what you mean by secondary market. Like you, you buy it and then you resell. Yeah, absolutely. NFTs okay. are not eBay just uh, gave the green light for NFTs to be sold on eBay. What? Okay, absolutely. The, the NFTs are going mainstream. So the apps and if we're only selling, if we sell a limited number, okay, and if you're looking at it from an investable standpoint of why should I put my money there? Let's, let's say you look at the design, you're like, it's not me, I don't wear hats. But if you're looking at the investable side of it, you have to look at it as there's going to be a limited number, it's collectible, and I can resell it on I mean, I can sell it on NFT marketplaces like OpenSea. I can put it on Rarible. I can put it on eBay and try to move it on the secondary market. And that's the mm -hmm. thing is that it's going to be limited. And so if you're one of the first people to get one, they're not going to happen again. Everyone else is waiting for series two. Awesome. 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 Guys, thank you so much. Um, if you're watching this video, the links will be in the description. They haven't started the Kickstarter yet, but I'm going to ask for their the link to the Kickstarter when they have it out. Um, if and if this is this is your opportunity, hey, make your decision on these guys. I'm not I'm not trying to tell you what to do or what. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to like really consider this project, especially for those bad hats, dude. I'm really excited about that. Uh, but yeah, do your do your research. Um, this is the wild west out here, and I think guys who show their face on the project, you know, there's no chance that they're going to bail on it. There, there's no chance that you know they're going to any kind of scam or anything right here. This, these are guys who are willing to put their faces out there and say, hey, yeah, we believe in our project. And uh, this is why you should believe in us too. And so uh, it's just the Wild West. And I feel like, you know, we need to find people who we could really trust and, um, you know, you know, be with and stuff like that. So uh, if you want to follow along on my journey to one Bitcoin and exploring this Wild West of cryptocurrency, hit the subscribe button, follow these guys, hit the notification bell. And if you're feeling generous today, just give us a, a like button on this video. Anyway, Adam, Chad, thanks for joining me today. Um, and we'll talk to you guys on the moon. All right. Thanks for having us, Aaron.